Well, good morning, everyone. And a beautiful day today. Uh, my name is Jake, and I'll be leading the service today. <clears throat> Norm Paulson, the founder of Sunburst, used to refer to all of us as soul travelers, which I have always really loved that term, that each of us is this unique spark, this unique facet of the divine, and we're on this journey together. So welcome, welcome to be. I'm glad you're all here today. Today's topic is embracing compassion. And um, there's a quote that Norm uh, wrote that I'd like to read. Compassion is indeed the lion heart, the warrior king, the individual performing selfless service to help others mentally, physically, and spiritually. This is the one in whom God loves to work. In the early 70s, um, Norm and a few other members gathered together for a series of meetings and meditations to try to start laying the groundwork of not only the teaching, but just how we live our lives together and how we can change ourselves so that we can easier make that journey of evolution as we travel through this life. And there's a drawing in the uh, lodge called the Sunburst Mandela, and there's a lot of history to it. We teach a class on it, where, where it came from and, and how it, to interpret it. But that was instituted in the early 70s as our symbol of how we should live our lives and make the journey while we're here. And so Norm received a lot of the wording that goes into that image. And the first thing was the eight paths of right living. And there's a booklet over in the lodge that you're welcome to pick up that explains all this. But And meditation is one of those paths that... that we should be doing each day, we should try to attain as we go about our day and live those eight paths of right living. And the other thing that he received was A, how important it is to live a virtuous life when you're on this path. And he was able to come to distill down 12 virtues and as he meditated on it, he realized that the signs of the zodiac kind of conformed to these 12 virtues. And so there was a virtue assigned to each astrological sign. So today we were in the vibration, astrological sign of Leo, and the, the virtue for Leo is compassion, and that's why the topic is embracing compassion. <coughs> so every year, at the end of the year, um, there's a small group of people that get together, and they put together the topics for every Sunday of the next year. And then our poor sister, Letha, <laughs> has the job of assigning speakers through the year to these topics. And I don't I give her a big pat on the back for doing that all these years. There's a lot involved. And when I saw this topic, I thought to myself, I think I just did this <laughs> topic of <laughs> compassion. And sure enough, I looked through my notes, my documents on my computer, and exactly a year ago, <laughs> I sat here and talked about compassion. So my 
you know, my evil mind right away goes, hey, I'll just use the same outline. <laughs> Easy peasy. And then I went, no, that's probably not what I'm supposed to do. So in meditating about it, I realized that I have not really advanced that much in having compassion for myself. And I felt like that was the issue that I'm supposed to learn from how quickly this topic came back to me. Because the first step in developing or embracing compassion is to forgive ourselves. And just be happy that we are, 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 have breath in our lungs and that we're able to walk around and, and talk and, and relate with one another and realize that as we age, and boy, I'm talking to myself a lot on this, but as we age, we don't possibly move as fast, we don't remember things, we forget where we put things, um, and we might have some aches and pains that start developing that don't go away. And as my wife Missy can testify, I am super frustrated sometimes by that. And again, I need to learn to be more compassionate and realize that this is a phase of my life now that I'm going through. And, and for all of us to realize that too, is that it's just a journey. We're all on a journey here. We're all human. We all make mistakes. So that was a lesson I learned by getting this topic so quickly for myself. Years ago, I, had, I attended a, an HR class, and, and the presenter was talking about how these, I don't know if they were scientists or therapists or what they were, but they, what they studied was the effect on the brain and our mood to being compassionate. And so what they realize is when you walk up to somebody and you are embracing them with love and compassion and understanding, they get this release of hormones within them that makes them feel really good. But the interesting thing was that the release of hormones in the person that's expressing this is greater. So we get greater, um, a greater high or a greater feeling when we are compassionate towards somebody or something. I thought that was very, very interesting. And by doing this, by, by expressing our compassion towards people, it has a ripple effect. Other people might see us doing it and then they'll start doing it. And it has a really profound possibility of just keeping rippling out to, to many, many souls, how important it is to be compassionate for one another. Buddha said, you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserves your love and affection. <laughs> So it's really interesting when you think about how amazing our Creator is. Best screenwriter ever, and how each of us in our unique facet that we are, are placed into these bodies, and the Divine's screen screenwriting ability is that he he or she wants to see each of us progress and get to the point where we are one with mother father god and yogananda said that this naturally happens 
lifetime after lifetime, but it takes a million years of lifetime for us to naturally progress to that point where we feel like we have reached God and have merged with our, with, with our Creator. So how do we possibly accelerate that process? And applying the right paths of right living and putting on the the cloak of virtues every day is one of the ways that we can accelerate our progression in this life that we exist in right now. Because the past is the past, and the future is, we don't know what the future is. We can project what we think is going to happen, but we don't know. All we have is this moment, moment by moment by moment. I think that probably all of us have experienced maybe walking around and hiking or whatever, and we'll see a really like a flat stone that has a perfect divot out of it. And, or maybe you see it actually in a spring where the the stream is dripping on the rock. And it's amazing. You know, here is this really hard surface and water just patiently just drips on it or rolls over it and smooths it out or makes a divot. Well, that's what turning the wheel of meditation is, is that we're creating this this movement on the, the rock of our past lives uh, in our book of life, the karmas that we've accumulated, the karmas that we've accumulated in this life, and accelerating the removal of them from our being. It helps put us in touch with the Creator, and we begin to experience a oneness that exists, not only around us, but within us, and how we are all united to everything in this creation. I have to say that after years of practicing Kriya, I have become more aware of the oneness of all creation. I am more in touch with Mother Earth and all the images on it plants, the animals, the environment. And I feel more compassionate towards those suffering in the midst of war, famine, racism, weather extremes. My heart just bursts when I I feel that. And by turning that wheel of meditation, we begin to not only achieve this oneness or this feeling of oneness and this desire to be compassionate and to actually change our lives, to make decisions that um, I'm going to start exercising or I'm going to change my diet or I'm going to eat organic food or whatever it is that keeps moving us towards being more in harmony with Mother Earth and our existence here and our purpose here. And we begin to see the divine behind every face. We begin to see the divine in the animals and in the plants. Our inner senses expand. Our intuition grows. And it's just 
sometimes it's frustrating because we seem like we're progressing very slowly. But it's kind of like hiking up a hill and you're just like, boy, I don't know if I can make it to the top. But then you look back and you see all you've accomplished and you feel like, all right, I did it. And that's what meditation can be like. It just feels like sometimes you're stuck, but if you hang in there and keep meditating, keep turning that wheel every morning, every evening, things break apart and you begin to feel lighter and happier and more joy, joyful. The Divine was so thoughtful in that he, she created us in these, these bodies with all the attributes, attributes needed to achieve cosmic consciousness. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to put ourselves through radical changes or anything. It's just simply meditating and living a good life and being virtuous with everyone that we meet and ourselves. Young and old, it doesn't matter what age we start. The, the real thing is, is we have to start. We have to start somewhere and start. And as Norm used to say, we become astronauts of inner space. So I really like that term. And we get to go within and we, we begin to dissect why we're here. Where did we come from and where are we going to go when we leave? We begin to get those answers. And it gives us a life purpose here. It gives us an understanding of why we are here and why we exist in these bodies and where we're going to go when we leave here. <clears throat> so as we sit here for the next 15 minutes or so in quiet time, let us all turn that wheel of meditation together and um, <clears throat> we'll do some ohms to start, and then April's going to lead us in with some with some bowls.
wanted to <clears throat> close with some re remarks and it wasn't that long ago, a few hundred years ago, that people that studied science kept looking at these bodies and trying to figure out what what the makeup of was them of them was. The first thing they discovered was a molecule, that our bodies are made of molecules, and everything is made of molecules, everything in the in creation. And so they were like, okay, we've discovered the secret of life. Well, years go by, and instruments get a little more sophisticated, and the scientists go, no, the atom, there's an atom atoms that make up these molecules. So atoms are what comprises all of creation. And that's it. We figured it out. And then time went by and more sophisticated instruments and they found out that there's subatomic particles that make up the atom, that make up the molecules. <laughs> And they said, okay, we figured it out, we got it. Well, now they're discovering that there's even smaller particles that exist in the subatomic particles. Yogananda made a reference to the energy that emanates from the smallest of all places, the great central sun, where the divine pushes the images through like, like, an, a, like a projector, pushes the images through up onto the screen, and the screen is creation, and all that exists there, all the dimensions. And Yogananda said that the energy that comes out of there is life trons. Small, small, small particles of the divine and he called them life trons. So when we're meditating and we're using the Kriya technique, we are drawing in these life trons through the crown of our head to the base of our spine and then back up. And we're circulating, we're turning that wheel, and these life trons are energizing the, all the particles, <laughs> subatomic atoms, molecules of our body and energizing them and polarizing them towards the Creator. And just like David so eloquently explained yesterday, Norm's experience was that he was able to get to the point where all of his particles lined up with the divine and he was able to exit and experience all the wonderful things that he experienced. And you can read in Yogananda's autobiography when Yuteshwar thumped him on the chest and the, the energy that he experienced, the cosmic conscious experience that he had. And there's so many other souls that have experienced this, this incredible ability to merge with the divine and be changed forever. There's testimonies from these soul travelers that have had near-death experiences. And the large majority of them have a similar experience where they find themselves in a tunnel and at the end of the tunnel is this light. And this light is just emanating pure love and forgiveness. And so many of these people, when they come back, get breath back in their bodies and are changed forever. They quit their job or they started on a lecture tour or whatever it is, they 
Never forget that experience. And this is a, for all of us to be able to experience. We don't have to have a near-death experience. But if we put the effort in and we, every morning when we wake up, when we say, I'm going to put on the 12 virtues today and I'm going to walk the eight paths and I'm going to meditate morning and night and not be frustrated if we don't feel progress because the life trons are wearing down that rock and smoothing it out and releasing <coughs> karmas and energies that we have that are holding us back from realizing who we really are. We're all real natural men and women that are supposed to walk this earth in tune with the divine and feel the divine working through our hands and our feet in our minds and feeling that connection. That was the whole purpose of the, of the screenplay that the divine created. Was it so the divine could experience everything here, everything in creation. And so, Sunburst is here for all of you, whether it be phone calls, emails, visits, Zoom, <laughs> snail mail, that we're here to support everyone in their journey in this life. So please don't hesitate to contact us, come visit, and join us in, in our desire to know the Creator and to become that natural man or natural woman that is our purpose here. The Dalai Lama once said, Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Let us then embrace compassion and embark on a journey of healing and renewal for ourselves and for our world. <clears throat> Please join me in prayer. Almighty Spirit, Almighty Spirit, Mother, Father, God, Mother, Father, God, our soul's desire, our soul's desire to live here in harmony, to live here in, harmony in, these bodies, in these bodies, feeling you within us, you within us and, all us, and all around us. Guide us on this journey here. Guide us on this journey here. Show us ways, Show us ways that, we can that we can improve our lives here. That we can embrace compassion, we can embrace compassion. in all souls. And for Mother Earth. We give thanks for this life. And our hearts burst with love for you.
And the one you long for is on the way. And the one you long for is on the way. Prepare your earth, keep watch your sky. It's a cloud by day, it's a star by night. Heaven is on the way. Settle in like gentle rain And finer still a soothing mist Of understanding and sacredness Illumination, I knew you'd come Heaven is on It's a cloud by day, it's a star by night.